welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 2 for June the 9th, 2019. We're in Unit 1, entitled A Fulfilled Covenant, and our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Restored Relationships. Our devotion read is taken from Psalm 22, uh, verses 1 through 8, verse 21b, uh, through verse 28. Our background script is taken from Mark chapter 14 uh, verse 32 through 50 and also Mark chapter 15 and we will be studying today from Mark chapter 15 uh, verses 6 through 15 verses 25 uh, and 26 and also uh, verses 33 through 39. Our key verse reads, When the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. And this is taken from Mark chapter 15, uh, verse 39 from the NIV translation. Uh, we have uh, three lesson aims that we want to share with you today. Our first aim is, um, is to summarize Mark's account of the crucifixion of Jesus. Our second aim uh, to reflect on the amazing price uh, Jesus paid to establish a new covenant between God and humankind. And then thirdly to uh, pray for restored relationship with God in light of the reconciliation uh, that Jesus provides. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled, Jesus' Fate Sealed. Our second outline is entitled, King of the Jews. And then our third outline is entitled, Torn from Top to Bottom. I certainly thank and praise God for this opportunity to be able to uh, share God's Word with you, to share this lesson with you, uh, certainly to be able to revisit this narrative from uh, Mark's Gospel of the Crucifixion of Jesus and just to uh, appreciate the things that God has done uh, through Christ that we can have uh, a relationship with Him uh, that had previously been broken uh, because of our sin. We have a lot to share with you today so we want to get to our lesson, um, our biblical context from the quarterly um, the charges against Jesus. So the Jewish religious leaders uh, had to make a string case before Pilate to justify Jesus receiving the death penalty. Uh, both Herod and Pilate could find no basis to justify Jesus' crucifixion. Uh, nevertheless, Pilate conceded to the Jewish religious leaders' request and sentenced Jesus to death. Uh, I want you to look at Luke chapter 23 verses 6 through 12 and also Luke chapter 23 verses 13 through 25. I want to read just a little bit of the context taken from our lesson standard. Uh, the Roman Empire was one of a series of powerful empires that the Bible cites as having dominated Israel. Uh, it followed Egypt, Assyria, uh, Babylon, and Persia uh, in that regard but Roman rule was not simply a political problem for Israel it was a religious difficulty so the Romans claimed absolute authority for Rome and not for Israel's gods uh, Israel's God so many of Jesus contemporaries uh, hoped for a mighty uh, military leader who with God's power would rally Israel to over overthrow their Roman oppressors but one way that uh, Rome demonstrated uh, its deter determination to squelch such movements was crucifixion. Uh, this style of execution involved hanging or nailing a victim uh, on a wooden frame and allowing the victim to die slowly from shock, exposure, uh, dehydration, and loss of blood. Uh, crucifixion was reserved for those whom Rome wanted to make a public example. Um, 
we want to come back to that uh, just a little bit and talk about that crucifixion just a little bit more but I wanted to share make some points about uh, Mark's gospel um, like Luke Mark was not an apostle as were Matthew and John um, but Mark is the briefest of the um, four gospels it's a narrative of uh, dynamic movement and action so we see words like straightway and immediately uh, being used more than 40 times particularly in the King James Version so um, uh, it presents Jesus acting rather than speaking uh, Mark's audience is not directed to uh, Jews as is Matthew but to the Roman uh, world giving a portrait of Jesus as the powerful son of God but this lesson is very humbling uh, for me it allowed me to go back uh, and just, just revisit the um, the crucifixion um, it was a, of, of Persian origin uh, this crucifixion or to crucify uh, and it was adopted by the Romans um, this cruel and shameful form of capital punishment was used uh, mainly against re, uh, rebellious slaves and insurrectionists so metal spikes were driven through the wrists or hands you can see that in John chapter 25 uh, John chapter 20 verse 25 also the heels of the victim who suffered terrible pain uh, so death usually resulted over the course of days from the effects as we said earlier uh, from the injuries also hunger uh, dehydration exposure and also uh, breaking the condemned's legs we can see that in John chapter 19 verse 33 uh, caused a rapid death by asphyxiation uh, since the leg could no longer lift the body to help a person breathe so but Paul uh, uh, notes the crucifixion of Jesus brought him publicly under the curse of God uh, you can see that in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and then there is a Old Testament reference uh, Deuteronomy chapter 21 uh, verse 23 so I want to also make mention of the fact that there are two uh, aspects uh, that uh, uh, really surround this narrative that I want to share with you uh, involving this crucifixion uh, the undercurrents of this lesson has to do with sin uh, we understand uh, uh, sin had a role uh, as far back as Genesis in the world and God was not satisfied with that arrangement uh, because it uh, it broke the relationship it broke the fellowship that he had with his creation and so God always undertook to restore to bring that relationship back to where it originally was before sin uh, came in uh, and severed that relationship but you want to note here that sin number one must be thoroughly judged as sin sin must be thoroughly judged as sin uh, I want you to look at Galatians chapter 3 verses 10 through 14 and also Galatians chapter 3 verses 21 uh, through 25 you might notice in the Old Testament under the uh, the Mosaic law uh, into the Levitical code uh, God gave the children of Israel a very comprehensive package of laws commandments ordinances statutes uh, uh, various uh, laws to help govern their relationship with him but these laws and commandments and so on they identified uh, the the behavior or the conduct of Israel before God that was uh, uh, spoken out against so when these individuals uh, broke those laws and commandments there was a system in place where they could 
uh, go to the priests. Uh, they could go to Moses. They could have an intercessor who would help them through the sacrifice that God uh, 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 said that they needed to offer for that particular sin to restore uh, that relationship or that fellowship so uh, what I'm sharing with you is that that sin item uh, was was thoroughly judged as sin the children of Israel knew exactly what God said about it so it had to be thoroughly atoned for uh, and then the second point is that sin must be thoroughly punished um, uh, I want you to look at Romans chapter 6 verses 9 through 11 and then Romans chapter 8 verse 32. And so uh, when you see the type of crucifixion that we are looking at uh, at the hands of the Romans that uh, Jesus encountered uh, the thoroughness of this death, the thoroughness of this punishment. It was public. Uh, it was intended uh, to uh, inflict the most pain. Uh, it was intended as a deterrent to future uh, individuals who wanted to rebel against Roman uh, uh, law, Roman uh, systems, uh, insurrection. Uh, it was graphic enough where it made an impression uh, uh, on the individual victim as well as the onlookers. But uh, the Romans wanted to make sure that they had thoroughly punished Christ for what they thought he was guilty of. Um, the beatings, um, the whippings, the, the crown of the thorns, the nails, uh, the, 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 the piercing, and all of these things work together to help us understand that this death, uh, this crucifixion was carried out in a material meticulous in a thorough way uh, uh, but as we look at Christ being the example or the atonement for sin I want you to think about how thorough this death was in terms of satisfying what God felt and how God felt number one about our sins and number two how he felt about establishing a relationship through Christ that you and I could enjoy. I hope this makes sense for you today as we look at this lesson but don't forget sin must be thoroughly judged as sin and then sin must be thoroughly punished. We see that in this account. So we want to get into uh, this first outline entitled Jesus Fate Sealed. This is taken from Mark chapter 15 verses 6 through 15. And I want to read this from the NIV translation. Uh, now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Uh, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priest had handed Jesus over to him. Verse 11, But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Verse 13, Crucify him, they shouted. Verse 14, Why, what crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them, and he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. So this was the custom uh, having Jesus flogged, uh, scourged, if you will. Uh, this preceded uh, the crucifixion. And so... I want us to understand that none of this is by surprise. None of this is a coincidence. Uh, this is all by design uh, by God to uh, establish a way that you and I could have this relationship. So Mark began chapter 15 by sharing the completion of the plans of the Jewish religious leaders uh, to have Jesus crucified. Uh, they would now hand him over to Pilate 
So we read the interaction between Pilate and Jesus. So Pilate knew that Jesus was innocent, uh, having uh, made no headway into getting Jesus to defend himself. Pilate had to think of another way to release Jesus or at the very least extend a punishment uh, not resulting in death. He had the answer. At the time of the Passover feast it was customary for Pilate to release a prisoner. However the decision was not Pilate's but the assembled Jews. To make the choice favor Jesus Pilate brought forth Barabbas a known insurrectionist and murderer as the other choice for release, Pilate was probably thinking, surely the crowds would call for the release of Jesus, but that's not what happened. Um, and it could not have happened uh, the way that uh, Pilate may have wanted it to happen because of the prophecy that had already gone out throughout uh, history, uh, the Old Testament, that this narrative would uh, take part uh, at some point to to come to pass if you will in terms of what God wanted to uh, do about this sin problem uh, as it relates to his people but it's important to understand um, this act uh, that uh, uh, that Jesus undertook needed to be um, uh, needed to be manifest uh, so you and I could understand as we revisit this story today that God had always initiated a plan that you and I could uh, enjoy the fellowship of his glory that we could enjoy the relationship uh, but there was a sin problem so all of the people cried out they wanted Christ crucified. Nothing he had done, and I'm glad the lesson lifted that for us to understand today. Christ was not a sinner. There was no sin in him at all. There was no darkness in him at all. But you and I had the sin problem. Mankind had the sin problem, and Jesus needed to die this death to sin. He needed to die. He needed to be crucified. Sin needs to be crucified. Uh, and so this is the message that we want to take uh, from this lesson today. So it's not something that uh, just haphazardly happened to Christ, but he came into this world for the express purpose of giving his life uh, when we read in John chapter 3 that John says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son look how he gave his son or look what he gave his son to go through this is the love that Christ that God has for us this is the love that God has for the world that he would give his son and have his son go through this account this horrific type of crucifixion for you and for uh, for me to have a relationship uh, with him it means a lot for us to understand God in terms of the respect of how uh, what 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 a relationship with his creation means to him what a fellowship means to him it means everything to God uh, he has always wanted this uh, the psalmist said uh, I believe in Psalms 8. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Uh, God is is passionate about his creation. Uh, we are the crown of his creation, man being mankind. And we lost something with God. And so God initiated a plan to to get us back into the status uh, uh, that, that we had before uh, sin came into the world and destroyed all of these things that, that, that we enjoy. And so it means a lot to me going through this account, knowing that God has thought so much of me and thought so much of you that he put a plan in place that you and I could uh, be reestablished. I love the way the lesson, uh, it, it tells us that uh, it's restored relationships, something brought back. But the question is asked here in the quarterly, why do Christians sometimes find themselves on the side of the majority uh, 
when the majority's position is clearly wrong. And so this is a challenge for us today as Christians. And uh, uh, I, I, I share with uh, students sometimes that we have to uh, uh, stand our ground. Um, uh, we are not going to be popular uh, in many circles because we stand for the truth. We stand out against sin, against unrighteousness, and so we're going to be ridiculed. Uh, and we are following the path of our Savior. He took a stand. Um, he came into this world and lived uh, in this world without sin. He took a stand. Uh, he didn't compromise himself, um, but he stayed the course. It cost him. Uh, greatly to stand that stand his ground uh, for you and for me and so it means a lot uh, uh, we don't have to and we should not have to compromise ourselves when we know things are wrong uh, and I'll give you another word for something being wrong uh, in a biblical sense it would be unrighteous it would be things not consistent with the right standing of God uh, something in that would be right would be righteous in right standing with God and so uh, we have to make sure that we represent as Christians uh, in light of what Christ has done for us. And so this is beautiful uh, to understand here. But the second outline is entitled King of the Jews. Uh, again from the NIV translation. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. And the written notice of the charge against him read uh, the King of the Jews. So in verses 16 to, through 20, Mark shared how the soldiers mocked Jesus. In verses 21 through 24, we uh, read where Jesus was led to Golgotha's hill to be crucified. However, he was so weakened by lack of sleep, hydration, and multiple beatings that he was unable to carry the cross. The Roman soldiers forced a black man named Simon to carry the top part of Jesus' cross. Once there, Jesus refused a mixture of wine and myrrh. Uh, that's in verse uh, 23. I want to just share a little bit about that, uh, the wine mingled with myrrh. It was a, a primitive form of a painkiller. Uh, myrrh was an expensive spice used as a cosmetic. And it was offered to Jesus at his birth as a gift for a king. You can see that in Matthew chapter 2, uh, verse 11. And, and, and it was also used in his burial by Nicodemus. You can see that um, in John chapter 19, verses 39 and 40. But here they had put these things to, um, uh, together, if you will, as a painkiller. But as we read here, Jesus refused it. Um, he didn't want to uh, he didn't want the painkiller if you will he endured the pain he endured the shame uh, he endured the beatings uh, they nailed him to the cross so that the process of, of crucifixion could begin and so we know that it was still morning so when the crucifixion began, knowing that the Sabbath began at sundown, it was imperative for the Jewish religious leaders that those being crucified be uh, were dead by that time. And so uh, although Pilate thought Jesus was innocent, whether on his order or not, Jesus' crime was listed uh, above him as being a king of the Jews. Uh, so this meant uh, both uh, an insult and a warning to Jewish people. So Mark recorded that Jesus was crucified between two criminals and that he was insulted by multiple people, included the Jewish religious leaders. Are we understanding this narrative? Um, so much going on here um, that this death... Um, at the hand of the Romans was uh, being applied to uh, uh, to create the maximum effect uh, to those going through the crucifixion the, all of the insults everything that they could throw at Christ they did it um, 
to to deter those who would rise up and also to thoroughly punish this man's sin that they thought he committed but we want to be able to appreciate that God was overseeing this entire process and had already prophesied even in Isaiah 53 that it pleased him God to crush his son and put him to grief on our behalf but here is another question in the quarterly we have heard how people can insult others for years with falsehoods unfortunately some of those insulted get tired of the insults and start doing what they are accused of being why is that and how could they have made better choices um, many times I share with uh, Sunday school students uh, there are times in our lives as believers we have to wait for the truth we have to wait for the truth to come we have to wait in spite of all of the things the negative things the lies the deceptions the stumbling blocks that have been th thrown in our way uh, to keep us from going forward but I encourage you today to wait for the truth uh, uh, God will bring the truth God will bring light to that situation if we just hold our peace we don't have to compromise ourselves uh, because God has delayed sometimes a trial will test us and reveal not only uh, what has happened but who we are in the midst of that trial and that situation and sometimes we understand how much patience we have how much tolerance we have how uh, much courage we have how much endurance we have and the list goes on and on but sometimes these things are allowed to buffet us and to test us and it will reveal you to you it will help you understand where you are but I encourage you today um, don't be discouraged about the negative things that people are saying and that they are doing uh, uh, keep your ground take your stand and and whatever happens you stay with the truth you stay with the things that you know uh, God would have you to do uh, but we do get weak along the way and we want to take matters into our own hands and so uh, we have to learn to wait for the truth uh, it took time for even this narrative uh, to come about in the fullness of times one passage of scripture says that uh, uh, God uh, sent his only begotten son it took time for the, the, the prophecies to fulfill and think about the prophets of old who uh, uh, shared all of this information with us how God used them he would bring the Messiah into the world they never got a chance to see it think about the patriots who in Hebrews chapter 11 they all died in faith not receiving what was promised but they were expecting God to fulfill what he said he would do they were looking ahead so they forgot about their temporal lives and and they forgot about all the things that that pleased them they were solely focused on what God promised and they died the Bible says they died in faith so it's possible for us to hold on uh, to keep the faith no matter what happens in spite of the things that uh, people do to insult you uh, be encouraged and just know that God has not forsaken you uh, but then our last outline is entitled torn from top to bottom this is taken from Matt, from Mark chapter 15 verses 33 uh, through 39 I want to read this again from the NIV translation at noon darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon and at three in the afternoon Jesus cried out in a loud voice Eloi Eloi lama sabachthani which means my God my God why have you forsaken me when some of those standing near heard this they said listen he's calling Elijah someone ran and filled a sponge with uh, wine vinegar and put it on a staff and offered it to, to Jesus to drink now leave him alone let's see if Elijah comes to take him down he said 
and with a loud cry Jesus breathed his last. Verse 38, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. So we have a lot to unpack here, but I want us to understand that uh, Jesus here, when he began with a word, that began with the first syllable as Elijah and because Jesus was uh, of his weakened state and probably slurred speech those around the cross thought Jesus was calling Elijah. In reality Jesus was fulfilling the prophecy of Psalm 21 verse 1. I hope you will read that entire messianic Psalm, uh, Psalm 22 and also Psalm 69 uh, that we get some reference here uh, about this fulfillment here, this word, this prophecy that has gone out about what would happen at the crucifixion of Jesus. Uh, so, But in no way should we interpret this to mean that God had forsaken his son. Instead, uh, because Jesus had taken on the sins of humankind, God had literally... Uh, God had to literally turn his back on his son, uh, but God and sin don't mix. However, when Jesus rose from the grave, he overcame sin because the end result of sin was death. You know, when as we, this culture today, we hear a lot about sin and we hear a lot about uh, God's involvement with sin. Um, and I'm not quite sure where we get those interpretations from but the lesson is clear the narrative is clear all the gospel writers agree that Jesus died uh, and Romans chapter 6 tells us what kind of death Jesus died uh, Romans 6 verse 10 tells us that Jesus is dying a death to sin so what should that uh, tell us today is that as believers, we should be mortifying the deeds of the sinful nature. We should be putting to death uh, those things that re, uh, speak to the old nature, certainly with the help of the Holy Spirit. But by no means has Christ gone through this type of crucifixion, this death, all of the things that we have read that the gospel writers have presented to us uh, in terms of Jesus death we should not interpret that as that God has given us the liberty and the grace to become better sinners if God did that what would be the purpose of his son going through this encounter or this crucifixion why would God need to send his son into the world to die a death to sin so you and I could be better sinners? It doesn't make sense. So we have to understand that from the Old Testament and to the New Testament, we've learned that God is holy. His character has always been holy. And because of our sinfulness, that has brought Christ into the world to die the way that he is dying and suffering the way that he is suffering. Remember what we said earlier. Sin has to be thoroughly judged and then sin has to be thoroughly punished. So this is the purpose of this death is to teach us that God is serious about having a relationship with us that is free from sin. God is serious about our conduct as people of God. So as we learn through this narrative here, and as we get through the resurrection, now that Christ, uh, uh, after the, the three days, he is raised uh, 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 from the dead. So as Christians, we can now live a resurrected life through faith we now have the same victory over sin. We have the victory uh, over death. We have the victory in spite of. We have the victory because of Christ's 
death. He is totally victorious in this. He has been thoroughly punished as a result of our sinfulness. And so we learn from Philippians chapter 2 that God has highly exalted him because of this act, because of this uh, event that we're reading, because of this narrative, and bestowed upon him a name that is above every name. So we have to look at the reality of what Christ has done. Why did he die? And we certainly have to look at the reality of what, what God expected out of his creation. So at the moment, at the very moment, the curtain separating uh, the holiest part of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Jesus' sacrificial death meant that all who believe in Jesus could enter into the presence of God at any time, not just the high priest. So in verse 39, we recognize the irony of the Roman centurion's words while none of the religious Jews spoke such words recognizing Jesus' deity, uh, this pagan man of war did. So we want to be able to appreciate the fact that um, we now have access to God in a way that we could not enjoy before. We do not have to go to and through the high priest as Israel uh, has done that tearing of the curtain that old uh, uh, system that old Levitical system that Israel lived under and they had to go to the priest and they had to seek Moses out these uh, individuals were types of intercessors but now that uh, 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 the, the true type uh, has come uh, the second Adam, if you will, Jesus Christ, the righteous, uh, and he has gone through the process of satisfying the requirements of God to pay this sin debt, then we do not have to go through that system as Israel had to go through. Uh, and so your pastor is not your mediator. Uh, there is no one who can mediate. The first epistle of John, chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, helps us to understand that when we sin, we have a mediator, one mediator between God and man, and that is Jesus Christ. He is the only one. This is why we pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus says himself to his disciples in the upper room discourse, part of that in John chapter 14, he says, No man come to the Father. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me or but through me. So we have to go through the sacrifice. We have to go through the blood. We have to go through the atonement of Christ to 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 be recognized we have to go through the sacrifice of Christ because he was the propitiation for our sins he was our attorney he is our litigator he is our mediator he is the one the only one uh, the, 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 the perfect Lamb of God as uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 9 and chapter 10 would help us to understand he only had to make this sacrifice one time and so uh, there's no need for this old system anymore uh, that Israel lived under. Now we can go to God at any time. That's a relationship that you and I uh, should, should want to be a part of. That we can call on God at any time in the name of Jesus. So the question is asked here. We have heard had people ask us to pray for them have you ever wanted to ask them whether they were praying for themselves why or why not so we just gave you uh, first epistle of John chapter 2 um, verses 1 and 2 to help you understand that that we all uh, we should be encouraged to pray for one another but uh, let us understand this we have no special no big eyes uh, uh, 
no little use. We don't have any special privileges over the other. We all have access to God. So in addition to me praying for you, which I would love to be able to do, uh, we also have to recognize the fact that we can go to God for ourselves. You have the same privileges. You have the same rights. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 helps us understand this as well, that God has brought both groups together, uh, that he might establish peace. And so uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, we A couple lessons ago, we were talking about uh, the Jews and Gentiles and how uh, the Gentiles seem to think and that they were better than the Jews because they had received a partial hardening from God. But none of us have exclusive rights to God. We all have access to him. So in addition to those who might pray for you, you have the capacity through what Christ has done. The door has been opened. The veil has been torn. You can go to God through Jesus Christ for yourself. So we want to make use of that. Pray for yourself. Pray for the things that you know you need from God. It's not so much that the preacher can get a prayer through, but if you have the faith in God, you can get the job done. So one last point I want to just lift about this lesson, and, and, and it's critical for us going and establish this relationship we, if we don't have one with Christ is that it establishes peace. One of the things that sin does be, uh, uh, as how it affects our relationship in terms of having a relationship with God, it breaks the peace. It breaks the peace that you could have. It breaks the, the bond that you and I could have with God. And so sin is a, is a, is a binding factor. And so what Christ has done by dying this death atoning for our sin it establishes peace between humankind and God uh, sin is the type of thing since God hates it, it 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 keeps him because of his nature his character he cannot participate in sin uh, James chapter 1 verse 13 will help you understand that and so we don't need to uh, 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 misinterpret uh, God's character but we need that peace uh, Romans chapter 5 um, verse 1 and 2 uh, uh, therefore having been justified by faith we have peace with God and that's very important uh, in terms of how we want to live and how we want to exist we want to have peace uh, Jesus says to his disciples in John chapter 16, My peace give I unto, unto you, not as the world. There is a difference. The, world's, the world offers uh, tangible things uh, 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 that, that we can enjoy and surround it, uh, ourselves with as though they offer us some, some ease and some, some peace in life. But this peace passes all understanding this peace that uh, God gives to us it is not of this world and so we need that peace uh, that we need that peace to ward off fear to ward off anxiety to ward off distress uh, to ward off all of these other things that cause people to self-destruct in the face of adversity peace will allow you to have courage in the face of life's eels. Uh, uh, peace will allow you to, to get in the bed at night and go to sleep and trust God to keep you, to keep your children, to keep your circumstances. This is what peace will do. There are many benefits to peace, but without Jesus Christ and without faith in Jesus Christ, we cannot have that peace. Without this atoning death for our sin, we cannot enjoy these things. And this is what God wants us to have in this relationship. It's not just a superficial type of relationship. It is a relationship with substance. Uh, if you read Galatians chapter 5 and look at the fruit of the Spirit uh, and look at all the things that we have as a result of having faith in Christ and what Christ has done on the cross.
for us. I want to close with this prayer. Lord God, we are thankful daily for your son's sacrifice on the cross. He took on our sin burden without hesitation. For that, we now have a restored relationship with you. We thank you both for the power of reconciliation. It is in your son's name we pray. Amen. So again, until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.